everyone. My name is Amanda and I am the owner of Lux and Lace Bridal in Buffalo, New York. So I wanted to make this video because I've recently opened up a bridal boutique and it's only a few months old but my journey started about three years ago and I realized when I started this journey that there really wasn't a whole lot of information out there for not only a brick and mortar store but also for starting a bridal store. Um, it seems to be a very kind of niche area that there just wasn't a ton of information about so I really had to navigate, um, navigate starting the store through a lot of trial and error and just kind of putting things together on my own. So I kind of wanted to show everybody my journey in hopes that maybe I can help somebody out in the long run. So I'm actually going to back the story up about three and a half years to when my now husband and I were dating and we had started talking about marriage. So like any girl, I have been pretty much planning my wedding since I was very little and I had my Pinterest board ready to go with all of my ideas, but I was finally able to kind of start looking at dresses and kind of start planning out really what I wanted, um, even though what we were doing was still a ways down the road. Um, it was just fun. and. So I started looking around at what was in the area and we had a few of chain bridal stores and a couple other bridal stores that had been around for a very long time. And while they still had a lot of nice things, they really didn't have a lot of what I was looking for. I wanted something really glitzy and glamorous and a little bit more like fresh and new. Um, and I just wasn't finding that where I wouldn't have to travel hours out of my way to go to. So. I kind of had the idea that I wanted to have my own store. I, had I knew I had always wanted to have some kind of store or be in fashion in some way, but I really just truly really didn't know what it was. So as I kind of started diving deeper into looking into bridal, it kind of just came to me that I knew I was meant to be in the bridal business. So I kind of dove in and started making a business plan and starting from the bottom up. Um, I worked with a a small business center at a local college here and they really prepped me to get my business plan ready and so I had everything in place that I needed as far as looking at um, like legal things and looking at spaces and how much money we'd have to spend and then of course having all of like the financial statements ready to be able to present to a bank because this is something that they're all going to look for. Um, so I was about 25 at the time and I was very young and naive and I really thought that I was going to be able to walk into a bank and show them how prepared I was and they they were going to give me lots of money. Um, little did I know that that's not how banks work and you can have the best of intentions but you really have to be able to back yourself up. So it was a really humbling experience to essentially have a bank tell me no that they weren't going to give me money and the money that I had um, on savings while it would have covered some costs it really wasn't going to carry me as far as I needed to go so it really just didn't make sense um, and kind of coincidentally at the time I was looking at spaces um, to rent out for rent out for the store and there one particular space that I had been working on for a really long time in negotiations with it kind of fell through so uh, it all kind of happened at the same time so it really felt like fate that I shouldn't be starting this business at this time but I always knew that I had the business plan in my back pocket and over the years I would tweak it and just kind of go back and revisit it um, but also during that time, I decided to go back to college and I went for um, apparel design so that I could learn more about not only like the business um, and how like the fashion industry works, but also I could learn like more like technical skills as far as being able to um, sew and do alterations, but also learning more about, you know, like the, the human body and the women's body specifically and how to fit things on someone and really be able to start getting comfortable in that arena while I was kind of building up more income to be able to put away to put towards the bridal store. Um, I knew I always also wanted to do some sort of fashion design but I didn't know what it was so these two things really seemed to go hand in hand when I decided to do the store. Um, it really just kind of came together for me. Um, during that time there was also a professor at the school who owned a local bridal um, company and she made wedding dresses and did some reconstructions. So I really sought out um, interning with her over a summer so that I could really make sure that what I wanted to do was was to make bridal dresses and to be in that business 
and one of the biggest pieces of advice that I could get is to really kind of dip your toe into the industry you're looking to go into and whether it be an internship or taking some courses or whatever it may be just to really make sure that you know what you're getting into and that you're not making a big time and financial commitment to something just to find out down the road that it isn't something you truly love. Um, I was fortunate that it really kind of reaffirmed what it is that I wanted and what I love to do. I learned so much and I was able to actually work with her a second summer um, on some projects. So I was really, really fortunate that I found kind of my calling, but also that I had someone who was able to really kind of guide me through um, just like this whole like learning process of this business. Um, at the time, I kind of had really put the store on the back burner and I was getting married myself, so I was making my own wedding dress and really kind of diving into this whole thing all together and it was really overwhelming. So the store itself took a really big back seat um, but it also, again, like that whole process of getting married myself, really helped me learn more about what goes into the wedding business and the wedding industry. So that was also really helpful and again, just kind of coincidental. But um, I decided a few months after the wedding and after everything was settled down that I needed to make a choice on whether or not I was going to kind of dive into bridal designing and starting a line or if I really wanted to have a store. So I figured at that time, I already had my business plan in place. I felt like I had a really good foundation as far as education goes and understanding of what it was that I was kind of doing and getting myself into, that I went back to the business plan and I started to reassess and look at the numbers and start looking at spaces just to make sure that the um, kind of the rent prices that I was looking at paying were matching up with what I already had so that I could really, again, get everything ready to present to a bank um, and just be really, really super prepared. Um, so during that time, I actually was able to go to a bank and although I didn't get everything I wanted, they were really able to approve me for um, more money and there was a little bit more confidence behind what it was that I was doing, which I think that they saw by me being able to tell them about my past experiences and kind of back them up with um, with that, but also with my whatever I was going to personally be investing into this. Um, it gave them a little bit more security. Um, but then I also was looking at a few spaces and there was one that couldn't have more fallen in my lap more than it did and I'm actually sitting in it right now. Um, I was out looking at some places and I had somebody essentially contact me that this space was for rent because it was right next to a building that I was um, originally looking at with the same landlord. So it really worked out perfectly for what it was that I wanted to do and timing wise it was also great. Um, so something I learned and I'll dive into in another video is the timing of seasons and of the fashion industry but there's also of the bridal industry. Um, when I was looking at this space it was about November and really to get the store up and going it would have to be up and running by um, January no later than the very beginning of February. Um, bridal season is really heavy um, in those early winter months from a lot of people getting engaged. So it was kind of a split or last minute decision to either jump on it or to wait until either six months down the road or 12 months down the road for the following year. Um, so I kind of just decided to dive all in because at that point, what do I really have to lose? Um, you know, if you have an idea and you feel confident and you feel good about going forward with it, one of my biggest pieces of advice is just to kind of trust yourself and trust your gut and to go with it. So that's really what I did and I poured all of my time and energy and a lot of the money into it as well, um, but I got it up and running um, probably within, you know, I think a good six to eight weeks, I had everything set and ready to go. Um, so there's a whole lot that goes into actually opening the store and legal things and I'm um, getting more financial aspects of it but then there's a lot of like little pieces that you really probably don't think about as far as um, office supplies and where are you going to put everything and how are you going to take payments and hold your inventory and you know just making it a really comfortable place and lots of um, lots of like little details that you really truly don't think about um, so I'm going to kind of touch on that later in another video, but all I 
really want to be able to finish up with today is that if you have an idea for a business and you really want to get started with it, it can be a really long and exhausting process, but if it's something that you truly love and truly want to be doing, I say 100% you should go for it. Um, and you have to be really prepared because there's gonna be a lot of people asking you a lot of questions because there's gonna be a lot of other people who you're gonna be working with that are going to be looking at things from a totally different perspective than you. Um, a lot of people who start businesses, you know, you're kind of a dreamer and you're really excited about it, uh, but you kind of have to let that um, not overshadow the fact that you have a big responsibility on your hands to be able to make some money and be able to pay back banks and loans or if you borrow money from family or friends. Um, so it really can be a very interesting process, but it's been a ton of fun and I'm really excited to be able to show you guys more of how I got here and some things that I did and also some things to avoid and whether it will, so it'll save you time, maybe it'll save you money, um, but just kind of help the process move a little bit smoother. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you do and you had any questions or if there's anything you want me to touch on, um, please leave me a comment and I will do my best to kind of bring you along on my journey and share any information that I have with you. Thanks so much.